everyone. Welcome to this episode of The Trainer Feed. We are your hosts. My name is Angel Sanchez. With me, I have Mr. Jacques Delager. What's up, everyone? And then Mr. David Bravo. What's up? Hey, my work. Na, 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 na. David's na, na, mic is na, working. Na, na. Let's give him a round of applause. Let's give him a round of applause. Finally. He worked very hard to get his mic working. <laughs> and now it's back up and running. So we got David, uh, undisputed champion of uh, mic usage. <laughs> Interjecting. Pause. Pause. Or not. Pause. Wait, if David wants to interject, you let him interject. Make way, make way. I'm coming through. <laughs> uh, let us get David, pass that to me. I'll give you some more um, agua fria. Oh, thank you. And then, Jacques, tell us all about what the topic is for today. So, we're enforcing the NFL season at this point, and so often we hear. This guy or this guy or another guy is out with an ACL tear or an ACL injury. And it, it, these injuries are crazy. And sometimes these injuries happen before the season starts. So it's in preseason or even in, in training camp. And I've done a little bit of reading the past few days and looking into it. And there's no one reason why it, it seems to be more current than ever was. But some of the themes that seem to be coming out are that players are bigger than they were before, they're stronger, they're faster. Uh, when I say they move, they also move faster, so they're better at changing directions than they used to. They're also just training more than they were back in the day. Everything's a little bit more intense because competition is driven up. Again, the NFL is worth more than it was five, even 10, 20 years ago. So those are some of the themes that I've seen when talking about why they think the, there's such an increase of ACL tears in the, in the league, in the NFL. I don't know how to think about that because just, be, you know, you said it's they're bigger, faster, stronger, training is more intense. I mean, shouldn't shouldn't the tendons and ligaments, you know, also adapt to that? But, yeah, but in th- but then in theory, they don't, they don't change size, right? If the average size, okay, so I'm going to sound like a little bit of a clown here. The average NFL player is probably bigger than they were 20 years ago. Right? <laughs> Colin? Is that is that the coffee and lemonade special? I was dying to listen to that over the... <laughs> what? What is it? <sighs> Angel trying to make David sick with sour milk. <laughs> You're know, trying to kill me. <laughs> Let's taste it. Taste it, taste it. I mean, you eat mold, do we find? Holy shit. What is that? Did you find this outside? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's like several weeks old. Wait, here you go. Alright. Um. Oh. Um, but David, you were saying anyway so, about the NFL players. I don't know. I think if the training is more intense and the trainers are getting stronger and faster, I think that their ligaments and their tendons should adapt. Be uh, be, uh, be adapted to it. I don't think. I don't know. And it's hard. I don't know. It hasn't. I don't. I don't know if there's been a study done to test the rate of that. Um, I think it's also very hard to say it's never one thing particularly. I mean... Yeah, like, did this just start now? or No, I just think it may... I don't, then do you argue that it's more that we hear more about it because news travels faster than it did 10 years ago, whether it be Twitter, whether it just be social media? But... I, I don't know, I mean... Well, no, I mean, if it's a player, you're going to hear about it. Yeah, and I think 10, 10, 20 years ago, news wasn't traveling as fast. and I guess things weren't diagnosed the same way. Well, I was going to say, maybe the diagnosis is different too. But they do. They, the other thing I was reading was that these guys are coming back from these injuries. At one point in the game, these injuries were almost career-ending injuries. And now that's not really the case. The, one particular example was, I think, Adrian Peterson, I think in 2011, had a... I think week 16 he went down and eight months later he was in the lineup for week one the next season. Mm -hmm. So eight months to go full circle 
Um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. I've also heard in the in the NHL there were some guys that were let's see this by this time. I'm gonna try it. There you go. Explanation to the coconut water debacle is uh, I hate to throw her under the bus, but sometimes when you live with people, they don't do the things that you do. And one of Sandra's uh, perks is that sometimes she'll open something and she'll take a sip and then she'll just leave it there. <laughs> and then she'll do that to multiple things. So, for example, there will be a LaCroix, she'll open it, she'll take a sip, and then she'll just leave it there. And then she drinks it the next day. I know, it gets flat after and it's not the same, but she says it's fine that she likes that. So anyway, there's a whole bunch of coconut waters in there, and they were for her because she wasn't feeling too good. So I said, hey, let me just get some coconut water. And so I bought like a six-pack of coconut water. And so I went in the fridge, and I picked one up, and it was like empty or like empty-ish. And then I picked up another one, and that one was full, or I thought it was full. So that was probably one that she opened. She took a sip, and then she put back. Um, you want to give me six, so I don't go to the wedding. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, obviously, like, but that's the thing, like, when you don't, like, when you live with people, they operate differently, and that's just something that you just can't really... My brother does that you shit. You can't predict it, so I just thought, oh, yeah, this is... Because it felt full, but she probably opened it, took yeah, a sip, and then like that. that was it, so... Dude, when I go home, there's, like, a bottle of juice or soda or, or ice cream yeah. with, like, less than a spoonful Oh, uh, yeah. And I'm like, dude, just finish it. <laughs> like nah, because maybe you want. To. <laughs> 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 like you might as well just finish it. Don't like get my hopes up when I yeah. see a thing and then like there's nothing in there. Yeah. What are you gonna do, man? It's just, it's just drink uh, your milk. Drink your milk. <laughs> I'm kidding. Coconut water. <laughs> Don't get me on that. Uh, but going back to the NFL. Uh, ACL injury. I was just mentioning, it's interesting, in the NHL last year, there was some guys that they were on a good team, actually the team that won, the Colorado Avalanche. There was one guy on there that his knee wasn't feeling right, and what he did was he went in for a small procedure so that he could be ready for the playoffs. Because mm-hmm. he knew if he played through it, it'd be very difficult, but he knew his team was, and not every team can do that, but team was good enough to take you, get, to get you to the playoffs. It's like the Patriots. Imagine you had... Oh, I'm not sorry, Tom Brady, but if you had Gronkowski, or even now, like, on the on the Buccaneers, I mean, he's retired now in theory, but if he was to play, and he'd be like, all right, week 12, let me get my let me get my knee scoped out, and maybe by, like, week 16, 17, I can take a few reps, I'll be ready for the postseason. Right. You know the team's probably going to make the playoffs. I think that's an interesting strategy, too. It can be a little bit bold, because imagine your team misses it, and you've just, like, not gotten the playoffs. But I've heard that, too. But because it goes on the... the the topic I just mentioned of these recoveries are just are faster and more predictable. I say predictable because I say a little bit earlier about how if someone got an ACL tear, for some it could have been considered like a career-ending injury. And I don't know, this is not quite ACL, but if you guys remember what happened to Alex Smith when he was at Washington, how he got his leg broken in three or four different places. It was really horrendous. And his recovery was really bad because he had to have so many life-threatening surgeries. We had to get a piece like of his glute on his calf and all this stuff. You guys seen that? No, I don't it's really remember. It's crazy, that. and to the point where, ah, oh, forget the name of the quarterback. But this, this, the crazy thing about this stat was the same injury happened to the Washington, what was then the Washington Redskins quarterback, the same field, uh, almost to the day, twenty or thirty years prior from the current reigning defensive player of the year. So that time it was Alex Smith from J.J. Watt. And then back 20, 30 years ago, it was Lawrence Taylor, the New York Giants. I think Joe Heisman was the guy who got like crushed. But the point I'm making is Joe Heisman, if, I, if I'm forgetting that's his name, the quarterback for the Redskins back then, he didn't come back from the injury. Whereas Alex Smith, even though it was very grueling, still came back for a season. So that just to show the scope and the advancements of... Um, surgical procedures, I think, not that I'm pro, but these recoveries are more realistic or a shorter timetable. So, but, yeah. Anyone else, any thoughts on that? Knee surgeries aren't fun, I'll tell you that. But my knee surgeries, all I say is in the, the four they've had, each recovery has gotten faster. And I don't what know. What you said? Of the four knee surgeries I've had, each recovery has gotten faster. I thought you only had two. Three, uh, four. Jesus. Wow. Mm-hmm. To the point we start forgetting, right? But 
each each procedure was maybe a little less invasive. Yeah, the surgery is on the low. Yeah, just to kind of like, just for fun at this point. Jack is loaded, paying for them surgery. I am not loaded. I have to say, man, those shits are expensive. Yeah, I tell me about it, and you get very upset when you find out the first one didn't work, and you did eight months of rehab for you to just go and do it again. It's very frustrating. You're thirty years old. Thirty-one now. Thirty-one. So the first one was back in 2015, 2016. Does anybody else in your family have knee surgery? My dad's had at least one, maybe two, and he just had it scoped out. Um, I don't think anyone else in my direct immediate family has. Um, so I've definitely like topped off the, and then the one hand surgery as well. So I've like uh-huh. gone for it. I have thought about getting those tattoos with the little scissor lines are <laughs> like showing there. I think, I think you're doing yeah, enough to your dope. body. But I, I, I think it'd be. You got scars. Yeah, I got. That's uh, you could. To here, here, I here, feel like the scars are better because the scars are like like a tattoo about a tattoo about surgery. A little silly, I think. When you have the surgical scars, it's like. What do you make? I mean, it is. It's better than a tattoo, because it's the actual mark of the surgery. And also, the guys who have done my procedures have been pretty good about the sutures they use. So the scar, I know, I've seen some examples where the the knee scar is like. Oh yeah, it looks yeah. like someone hacked them. Oh, hundred percent. They look a lot better. Um, these are pretty faint, honestly. To the point where like you almost can't see that I had them. So that's a good. That's a good thing. But yeah, five total. Yeah, five. Five oh, total five surgeries. surgeries. One hand. Oh, you added one to the knee. I was like, hold <laughs> up, man. Let me just hold keep up. ramping them up. You gotta check the tape. He said four, now he said five. <laughs> yeah. So I know. That's what, but that's what I like working with people with injury. If you're listening, you know this. I love working with people with injury because I know how when you wake up on the OR and Angel saw me one time and you're high on meds, but you don't feel your limb. And it can be, it can, it's quite a process to go from not feeling that limb to then being, I firmly believe you can be stronger than before the injury. Like is a lot of when, is that the time that you're like, I can't feel my, my legs? Yeah, that happened. I'm sorry, you're like- no, you can laugh. It's just it's just a point where you you wake up and you're like, I can't feel my legs, like because all the anesthesia is like still wearing off, and you're the first time you're like, oh, I lost the power of my legs. You're like, scaring. That's not a funny thing, but it is funny in the sense that when you wake up, you're just like so high and happy, like yeah. And the one- that, w- that was like unexpected, right? Uh, or am I thinking about a different story, where you where I think I don't know. There was a story that something happened and you called Angel or something saying that you can't feel your leg, or was that he came and picked me up. On the one before COVID, mm-hmm. maybe that, that was my left. That was my my the, the just the scoping out the left one, oh, okay. cleaning it out. Yeah, I think the other one he's talking about another surgery you had where you said you couldn't feel your legs. Yeah, it's just generally the anesthesia like work because they numb everything down. Yeah, when you hit. Did you see the one with a uh, little Duval where he got uh, he got hit while on his four wheeler and they ended up like flying him out um, like some serious shit and then he had a they had to put his leg back but then they were trying i think they were trying to drain the blood or something but he was awake and you could just see them drilling into his knee and he's just singing his song or he's singing his song or somebody said i'm living my best life and they were like isn't that your song Uh, as they're like drilling into his knee like "Mm." the only thing close to that i did was after the first procedure i did there was so much inflammation around the knee from the swelling and scar tissue the doctor he drained all the fluid out, and I'm sure like someone has seen this stuff. And <laughs> they put in his seat, they put some of these stuff there. It's like, ah, oh, it's not bad. I can't feel it. Then it goes in. You're like, oh. yeah. like it feels good that it it drains your knee, but like it's a pretty thick needle, and I don't like needles to begin with. It's one of those things you're glad it's done, but the time you're like, and that's why in every other procedure since my knee, he's like, no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm like, oh, I'm so relieved because <laughs> it's not a pleasant experience, but it's it's. Sometimes it's what you need. But Doctors be lying, too, about those needles. They tell you that it's not going to hurt, and then it does hurt. That pisses me off. Like, just tell me, like, straight up, like, this is going to, you're going to, like, not slight pressure, you know, but the dentists typically get that wrong more so than doctors, I feel. Ah, uh, so dentists scared of going to the dentist every time. Just be like, oh, no, you're just going to feel a little pressure. But like, dude, you're stabbing my face. Ah, uh, like, yeah, dentist. But with, um. And you smell, like, the smoke from, like, enamel and shit. Oh, That's my God. Like, Oh, well, you guys wear lenses. I don't think I told this on the podcast, but when... Right. So, no, 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 because I did LASIK last November. And that's an experience in itself as well. Yeah. It's like two seconds, I heard. Between 10 and 15 minutes. It's not long. Mm-hmm. And that's it's not like time. you can see a laser. Like, 
doodle in your eye. You it's not well blink? done. How do you not blink? Well, number eight, one, they hold your eyes here. Then they put... With the little metal fingers? No, nah, it's like something a little bit nicer. But it's it's not pleasant. But you just have to, no pun intended, like look straight ahead and know that after the 10, 15 minutes of uncomfortable uncomfortableness, you're, you're just better for it. It's, Do you see the laser? What if you blink by accident? You you almost can't. I can't remember why, or you want to, but they're held. So you, you do this, right, and that's it. And your eyes are a little dry, and they give you drops before for anesthetic, for anesthetic in your eye. And it's actually easier on the first eye because this this eye can can stay closed. And then once the uh, eye's done, this eye is like struggling because it's been fucked with for a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, and then this eye, and it, it feel you feel a little groggy for the next couple of hours. You nap. And then you wake up and feel, just keep using eye drops every hour. And there's another one you use several times a day. And after that, you'll feel a little not great the rest of the day. You go to sleep. You wake up. The next day, just wear sunglasses when you're outside. You, cool wear, you wear the, you put the eye drops in for the rest of the, like, for the next like, week. And you're good to go. Yeah. It's, re- like, it's life-changing. I know you guys both wear lenses and glasses. And I used to since I was like 16. I forget I even wore lenses now at this point. It's yeah. like... It's a game changer. I really can't like. I know you're playing rugby now as well, and your glasses. He's got new glasses on because what happened to the last one? <laughs> Those are the glasses from uh, what? What's that cartoon? <laughs> Dexter. Nah, nah, not not Dexter. It's a uh, emo girl, and it's a cartoon. She's emo and she has like the glasses. It was on Adult Swim. It was way back in the day. I'm trying to remember. It wasn't Dora, obviously. Dorothy. Dora the Explorer. I don't know. All right, I drew a blank. But that leads me to this next point. We'll wrap this episode up, but before we go, make sure to check out the YouTube so you can see David's glasses and tell me Sexy has glasses. what cartoon are they from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's also from Bob's Burgers, the girl from Bob's Burgers, but aren't Tina. they purple? Um, yeah. She like when I saw that? Huh? Tina, she's like... She does that weird groan, like groaning thing. <laughs> does she not? I haven't seen. They did a movie. Need to watch that. Oh yeah, the Dragon Ball movie came out too. Heard it's good. Yeah, I'm trying to see it. Need to watch Thor. So I watched last Thor. Time, last time I saw an anime movie, it smelled like cheese. <laughs> and then they started crying. And it wasn't the food. <laughs> it wasn't the food. And then they started crying towards the ending when the anime characters were dying. And I was like, oh man, this is why people get made fun of. <laughs> so bad. Oh, so shoot. many people just sniffling. I was like, it's a cartoon. Damn, they didn't right. really get sawed in half by a demon. <laughs> it doesn't really happen. You wanna wrap it up? Anyway, yeah, let's wrap it up. Yeah. We'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. Peace.